Welcome back, everyone. Today is November the uh, 13th, 2013, and this is uh, Moonscapes number 22. Um, it's been a little while. Uh, I missed all of the last lunar cycle. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, before I forget, like always, I'd like to let you know what we're what we're using and what we're looking at for the night. We're about three days from full moon, uh, and we are looking at uh, sunrise on Cassendi Crater, that beautiful ring crater uh, up towards the upper right, um, going towards uh, 1, 2 o'clock with a beautiful central peak in it. Um, and Mare Humorum is the circular mar there, and uh, Doppelmeyer is over there over on the left-hand side. We are using uh, my Max Shudoff Cassegrain 5-inch uh, telescope, uh, and we're using the uh, Skyview Pro mount. Uh, this is the uh, lesser of my two mounts. It's not quite as good as the, um, uh, the Atlas mount I use. Uh, uh, but that's the equipment we're using tonight, and we're using uh, a Mead 9mm eyepiece. Uh, eyepiece I really like. Uh, gives me nice, uh, lots of zoom features. Um, as you can see here, we can zoom a little closer here and bring in uh, our target of Mare Humorum. Uh, let's see, i got to see which way these controls go. I've been playing around with this a little bit tonight, and uh, oh, there we go. i got it going the right way. Um, anyway, last month... Uh, uh, I just couldn't get my schedules matched. It seems uh, every night I was ready to go out and do the moon. Um, uh, the clouds were around, uh, wouldn't allow for an observation. Uh, and when I wasn't available because I had some stuff going on last month, uh, it would be beautifully clear. As a result, uh, uh, it just didn't uh, work out, and I didn't get a video in last month. So this is the first one we've done now in almost two months. Um, as I say, uh, we're working on a moon that's... Uh, just about three days from full. I actually wanted to get out tomorrow night. Um, my plan was to get out tomorrow night and uh, work this Terminator. Uh, as you can see, if we go down, let me see. I mean, if I get the right way. This is the mount. Uh, you have to forgive me a little bit. This is that mount that's a little bit slow acting uh, until you get going the right way. But uh, this Terminator, as we go down here, we're headed towards the north side of the moon. Tomorrow night, that Terminator would be over and slicing almost right through the center of the Marius Hills. And as you know, if you watch some of my earlier videos, the Marius Hills are just one of my favorite spots. And tomorrow night would have been just absolutely perfect. The crater Marius would have been um, uh, just past sunrise, and the Terminator would have been cutting right through about the first half of the Marius Hills, which would have given us... Tremendous shadow throw, and we could have really gotten a good look. As you can see, even with this 9mm eyepiece, we can zoom in and get a fair fair amount of detail. I didn't want to go any higher than a 9mm tonight. Uh, as you can see, we've got some uh, bad scene. Um, it's a cold, cold night here in Connecticut. Uh, we're heading into uh, the fall season. And uh, uh, these cold, cold, crisp, clear nights, uh, they look nice for, you know, the stars, and you look up in the sky, and it looks really nice. When you put a telescope on the moon and the planets, as we discussed before, um, cold nights like this, you have rapid uh, heat loss uh, from it's built up during the day. The Earth releases that heat, and what you get is this wavering that you're seeing here tonight. It's not horrible. Uh, it's not quite as bad as I was expecting it to be, but it's not real good either. Um, uh, this is a real nice view. Uh, this, again, is the Crater Cassendi. Um, I, I had to do a quick setup tonight, uh, so I, I don't have my uh, computer that runs my Lunar Atlas uh, handy, so I'm not going to be able to give you as much information on some of these uh, uh, markings tonight. I just like to talk about a few things and show you a few things as we go along. Uh, so I, I, I don't have the miles uh, uh, diameter of these craters, but uh, that, that's just a gorgeous, gorgeous view of Cassetti. And then if we go up, back up towards the southern side, and again, now look how long. I, I've got my finger on the button to move the mount, and you can see it's still sitting there. 
this is how long it takes those gears to reverse and go the other way. Um, it should grab any second. When it does, it'll take off like a rocket ship on me probably. See, it's trying to go. It wants to go. And then all of a sudden, it's going to go real quick. It's just a sloppiness in the gears of this mount. So, yeah, there it goes. It's starting to go now. And then I've got to kind of coax it along slowly so I don't go too far. Here we're heading uh, farther south. Um, getting up towards uh, south pole of the moon. Um, that should be. There it goes. It's grabbing now. I want to get up here. Oh boy, there's a lot of a lot of nice detail here. Let's uh, let me see if I can control the movement of this here. There we go. Okay, there we go. Um, you know what? Let me try auto. Uh, we're getting a little bit overpowered here. I'm gonna put it in auto. Yeah, that controls a little better. Look at Clavius. Gorgeous, gorgeous view of Clavius. Clavius is just off center, just slightly to the left of center here. Uh, it's that large, large walled plain, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, about five other craters inside, and I'm sure there's even more than that. We've got a little more zoom. I can zoom in another click or two. Um, but that's a, that's a nice, nice view of Calavius tonight. Um, earlier in the week, uh, there was one night that I was thinking of using, it, and it would have been a fantastic and interesting night because the Terminator on that night several nights ago had uh, the Terminator run right through the center of Clavius. In other words, if it had been out and looking at it, um, the Terminator would have sliced uh, the crater right in half. We would have had sunrise on half of it and half of it uh, in total darkness. And it would have made for some very, very interesting detail. Um, as I was saying, it's chilly. I'm, I'm, I'm out in my car, as usual, out behind my uh, facility here. Um, and it's cold. I had the car running for a while, and I had the uh, heater on to warm it up a bit, but uh, it's chilling down pretty quick already. Um, as uh, we talked about earlier, um, I, I'm going to zoom around a little bit because I, I, I'm just going to show you a couple things and talk about a couple things. Uh, we've got the winter months coming up, and if you remember and you looked at any of my earlier videos, when I first started doing this project, I was shooting, there, there's Tycho, Tycho is right below center, uh, nice view of the crater Tycho. Um, my son uh, lived just about a quarter of a mile up the street, uh, there's the plain, and, ah, and there's that crater, uh, kind of, this is from memory, so uh, don't hold me to it, Baladalas, uh, I believe, or something like that, that was that crater we did a, a segment on where Ranger 7, I believe it was, flew over it. And it was imaged it as it went overhead and then crashed down below, uh, down towards the bottom of this frame into the moon. Um, that's when they uh, did the Kaza, kamikaze type uh, missions to take close-up pictures of the surface. Uh, that's a nice view of that crater tonight. But anyway, my son had this house a quarter of a mile up the street, and he had this shed in the backyard, and uh, we were able to... Uh, set it up so we could run wires out back. There's a nice mountain range there. It looks like a W. Um, and we would uh, run wires out to the telescope and we would heat this back room and during the winter months I could get away with doing some um, sessions uh, in the bitter, bitter cold. I can remember we did a couple around that blizzard last January and there was a couple nights we were out there and it was, it was only a few degrees above zero. Um, just to let you know, using my car like this, I can get away with it. Like tonight, it's going to go down into the teens here. Right now, it's probably in the, the upper 20s. Um, that's doable uh, with the setup I have. But we get into, now next month, December, I may be able to get another session in if I can hit a stretch of weather where it's kind to me. But if we get this brutal cold, cold weather, um, uh, there's just going to be probably... I'm thinking January, February, who knows how March will go, but especially January and February, it may just be too, too, too darn cold to set up and work out here. Uh, here we're coming up on Copernicus. We'll have a nice view of Copernicus tonight. Um, and so there may be a couple months that I will not get a video done uh, of the moon. Uh, and I've got some ideas. Uh, maybe I'll show you uh, a little better uh, some of these new eyepieces that I'm using. I, I love these Mead eyepieces. The, the, these, I, this eyepiece I'm using right here is a Mead 9mm ED eyepiece. It's a 
$79.95 eyepiece. It's a six element uh, with ED glass and a couple of the elements, and it gives fantastic images. And, and you can see uh, the field of view is, is tremendous. Uh, look, let, let's look at the zoom I have. I'm zooming fairly close. Let's start back out. Let's just take a look at the zoom. And just see that I'm zooming down now. I'm down getting close to half the zoom. Um, there you can see the Terminator, and that's not the edge of the field. That's the Terminator of the Moon in the upper right up there, 1 o'clock. Um, and we can zoom in down now, and there we're getting almost full frame. We're almost all the way down the bottom. And look at look at, look at the zoom we have. We have a tremendous amount of zoom. There's a sinus iridium, that partial C-shaped object over in the right-hand corner. You have Copernicus. Uh, that coloration in the center again. I, I still have some issues with that. That could be caused part. Uh, pardon me. That could be caused by some central obstruction. Um, uh, the other areas of the moon, uh, color-wise, I'm not too sure tonight. We'll, we'll do a little check on that a little later on. Let's zoom that back up. I like that view of uh, Copernicus closer up. But as I was saying, my, my son had that shed that we were able to use in heat, and um, it worked out fairly well. It was really pretty neat. Well, uh, I think I mentioned a while back, he got a nice promotion with his job, and he is now... Uh, down in the Ocala, Florida area. So uh, I have lost that shed. We will not be able to do that this winter. And uh, so we get be real, you know, brutal January and February weather. We'll probably have to think about doing a couple things inside the house and maybe show you, like I say, some of the equipment, these nice new white pieces I'm using. Uh, the camera itself, a little better view of the camera. Maybe a few things like that. I might be able to make some nice prints of some of my uh, single shots that I do, and um, uh, you know we can uh, take a close look at the with the uh, using the camera uh, to take a look at the, some of those prints and uh, look at details. Uh, you know some of the sharp details. Um, I'm looking at the time here. I'm about I'm 12 minutes in. Uh, a couple of things I want to discuss tonight um, about my work on this site. Um, and as I do, I'm going to try to move around a little bit so we're not on the same field all the time. Uh, one thing I really, I really don't like is, is I hate confront, confrontation. Uh, I, I hate to um, disagree with somebody and end up like um, almost like in an argument situation. I, I really don't like those situations. Uh, I love science and I, and I like having you know two different points of view and people working on two different projects. And that's fun. But when you, you when you do one thing and Somebody else can get back mad at you on the other side because you did something and they don't like it. I don't care for that. I don't like that. I try to stay away from that. And please remember, folks out there, I'm an amateur astronomer. Um, yes, I've been in the field a long time. I've been an amateur astronomer for 57, now going up, coming closer to 58 years. So I've been around a while. Yes, maybe I know a little bit more than the average person, but don't forget, I am still an amateur astronomer. So, you know, everything I tell you, you know, is not just, you know, it's from what I've learned over the years. And I'm sure some of it, there are going to be some errors in it. Uh, I'm not saying I know everything, because I surely don't. And the moon, I know very little about the moon and its crater names. As you can see, as we, if you follow me, I have trouble pronouncing a lot of these names. I, I worked for years on deep sky objects, uh, you know, in clusters and, and variable star work and such uh, with uh, CCD cameras. Uh, so, you know, the moon is, uh, you know, I, I started with it when I was a youngster, and, um, and now I'm kind of back to it as I'm finishing up my career. And uh, I'm just having fun with this. Um, what I'm getting is, at is back around, I believe it was around April, I, I did a video on uh, O'Neill's Bridge. Um, in you know, on the, the floor of Maricrisum. And I had somebody contact me that kind of didn't like what I said. Uh, I was talking about the, the, this bridge at Maricrisum. Um, and uh, there's Sinus Iridium. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous view. Um, anyway, um, I was talking about a, a historical event. I was talking about this possible bridge Bridgen, Maricrisum, and the people that got involved. I talked about the discoverer, who was, uh, um, I think his name was John O'Neill, if I remember right, uh, uh, 
he was an editor for the New York Herald Tribune. He was an amateur astronomer. He was the one that discovered it. And, uh, and then it got to a Hugh Percy Wilkins, who was a professional astronomer over in England. He got involved in it. And I was talking in historical facts. I was talking about the historical event um, of the discovery and, and the things that followed. Uh, now this one fellow contacted me and he says, "Well, you know, you 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 uh, you know you're dissing this other person because uh, the, there's a there is a bridge there, but it's not Neil O'Neill's bridge. It's it's another bridge, and it was like a hundred miles or so beyond that, out onto the other side of Mary Christum. Um And th- my, <coughs> pardon me, um, I wasn't considering that feature at all. I didn't even know that feature existed." The discussion had nothing to do with that second feature. It was all about a historical event. O'Neill's Bridge and whether it was there and whether it wasn't, um, it had nothing to do with this secondary object. Um, so, like I say, I was talking about something that ha- happened in history, and I was relaying that story. So it had nothing to do with this second so-called bridge. Now, I did look at it, and I looked at my image, and... By golly, there is um, an object in the area this fellow was talking about that is very strange. And it kind of looks almost like a fountain of water shooting out of one crater out into uh, uh, the surrounding area. Um, but you've got to remember, we're using tonight a 5-inch telescope. And even if I use my 10-inch my telescope, um, our resolution is limited. We're going to go down a little farther uh, South, I mean, sorry, uh, north. Crater Plato, really nice, really nice. One of these nights, like I say, one of your good steady night. I want to go after those craterlets in the, in the floor of that crater. But anyway, that um, that object, um, uh, I, I did get back to the fellow, and I says, uh, um, I explained to him that I was talking about an historical event, and it had nothing to do with the object that he was talking about. Um, and I looked at it, and I did tell him, yeah, it's very strange. I said, it's worthy of, further, worthy of further study, you know, and good luck with it. Uh, and I left it at that. I never heard from him again. But, you know, things like that kind of bother me because I really wasn't trying to put anybody down. I was relaying a historical event, something that really happened. And it had nothing to do uh, with this second bridge. Look at the coloration on the floor there of uh, um, the Mar right above Plato. You can see uh, browns and blues in that. Um, that's a uh, mare imbrium, and there's some nice coloration in there. Um, but to take that a bit farther, uh, I looked very closely at the object, and I see it, it was strange looking, and you could clearly see it on my image. I mean, I could see what he was talking about. It, it, it was there. There was no doubt about it. But that wasn't the object we were talking about. But I, I did push the study a little farther. I went looking for some really, really... Um, high quality imagery of that area and um, I found a site uh, by a um, oh boy I'm gonna forget his name now Higgins Higgins uh, what was this West Higgins West Higgins uh, high resolution uh, imagery lunar imagery or planetary imagery if you look if you do a search on it, I'm sure you'll find it and he did a nice um, mosaic of the the Mayor Christum area, and he just got in the field, not only uh, O'Neill's Bridge, uh, but this new feature this fellow was talking about, I could see it in the background. Um, and, and what it, now this, this was, don't forget, was taken with a much, much larger telescope, like in the 24-inch range. So the resolution is far beyond anything we had. And what it turned out to be on his high-resolution imagery was a ridge which was kind of horseshoe shaped. And when it caught the real low sunlight in the morning sun, it it gave it that fountain look. Um, So in my world, um, it's just another ridge um, that under certain resolution, small with small telescopes is going to give a view that um, you can't quite make out what it is, but it's very strange looking. We're going to move up here with this lower power and take a look at some color. Oh, and look, look at the color coming up on um, the floor of um, Mirror Tranquility. That dividing line there. Um, nice, nice. Uh, let me see if I'm going to get the... Yeah, here we go. Yeah, you can see... Uh, uh, I didn't like the way that... Let me see if... Uh, let me get the auto off. Let me see if I can change that color. 
that brightness back. It looked a little bit better when the brightness was a, a bit brighter. Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, see, there, it stands out a little better. It washes out some of the other detail, but look, look at that. Look at that divider line there. That is really something. You know what, folks? I'm getting a little chilly here. I'm going to turn my car and get a little heat. Let's hope it doesn't affect the image outside. Um, let me see where I left the heater. I don't want it on too high, but I do need a little heat. It's getting cold. Um, yeah, nice, nice view. Okay, let's, if I go back to auto, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's, it darkens it up a little bit. But okay, let's uh, let's try to get back up uh, along this uh, other side here, up, up towards the south. And we'll go up along. There's those uh, two impact areas. I, I have yet to pin those to craters. I have got to do that sometime. I'd like to, uh, the, oh, I'm in this area right down here. There is Maricrisum. There's the area we were talking about. See, and you can see Proculus is that. Uh, Maricrisum is the, uh, the round mar right over touching the field at 4 o'clock now. It's coming across the middle, and it's about de dead center, just below dead center is the circular mar, Chrisum. And then the sprayed uh, crater Proculus. We got a lot of zoom. Let's zoom in a little bit and take a look at it. Uh, and that's the area we're talking about. That's the area of O'Neill's Bridge. Uh, and out beyond somewhere in that area where Proculus is, where that large spray impact is, um, that's where that other feature is that looks like an arch. Uh, but, it, but in this high, high resolution imagery, as I say, it turned out to be a ridge, a, a horseshoe shaped ridge, and in very low sunlight, it, it, um, you gave it that strange look that make it, made it look kind of like a bridge. Uh, you've got to remember one thing here. Um, this telescope I'm using is a 5 inch and even if I go to my 10 inch telescope the smallest features that we're going to see on the moon um, are roughly one mile in diameter. Now stop and think about that for a second. One mile in diameter. Now if you take your take your favorite sports stadium, uh, me it's Yankee Stadium, if you're a Red Sox fan it's Fenway Park, if you're a football fan it's uh, you know, some football stadium, but take any huge, uh, the Rose Bowl, say, any huge stadium and plunk that on the moon, you will not see it with our telescopes. There's just not enough resolution. You would ha probably have to put, oh, four or five of those stadiums together to make an object that would just start to become large enough for you to see in the, in, in the telescope resolution we're using. So you've got to remember things like that when you're, um, you're starting to look at detail and trying to say, okay, that's a bridge, or you know, that's the, that's a, you know, some kind of a building, or anything like that. You got to realize they'd be very, very large objects because uh, just because of the resolution we're using. Um, I just uh, thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, and while we're looking around, uh, there's one other thing I want to touch on. <clears throat> there's those dark patches near the center of the moon's disk. Um, and if you remember my babbling on about lunar history, I love the lunar history and the early mappers, that area, um, uh, you can see it's drifting away from it, trying to drop, stop this drifting. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. If it doesn't grab quick, it's going to drift too far on me. Uh, but those dark patches near the center of the disk, um, there we go, we caught it. We got it back. Uh, those are the ones that Schroeder, and uh, others uh, actually thought might be vegetation, and which led to that to the story of uh, some of those early lunar cities. Um, of course, they were not lunar cities. Um, okay, let's go all the way up to back to the uh, southern highlands here. We'll come back around. Um, one other thing that. <laughs> I found pretty interesting. Uh, I, I peruse YouTube a lot, and I look, look at a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff on the moon and the planets and stuff. And uh, I look at some of the stuff that's pretty far out there, and, and some of the normal stuff. Uh, one thing I've run into, and I find it uh, pretty interesting. But uh, um, and again, like I say, I hate confrontation, so I hope this doesn't start problems out there. But I've run across some sites where people are claiming the moon, it, the orbit has gone wacky. Uh, something's changed. Uh, let me get this moon back again before I lose it here. 
uh, and I'll pick it up again. Okay, let's go. Okay, I pulled over some. Um, they claim, you know, the the moon is its orbit's all wrong. Sometimes it's way, way down in the south, and then it's way, way up to the north, and it's all over the place. And uh, well, <laughs> that's the moon. That's what it does. If you take a large map of the sky and lay it out on a table, you know, like a flat map, like you had a flat map of the Earth, and it'll show the ecliptic. And the ecliptic is the path that the moon and the planets follow across the sky. And they stay within a, you know, a few degrees of this ecliptic. And you'll notice it's very S-shaped. The moon, when it's near full and rises during the summer months, it rises in the constellations of Sagittarius and Scorpius. They are very, very far to the south. They're about minus 30 degrees south of the celestial equator. Okay, so they rise very, very far to the south. Now that's, you know, July, August, that time frame. And here we get back to that beautiful view of the southern, southern islands. Now, I just can't get enough of that. Um, now, we get to this time of year. We're in November going into December. The moon's coming up to a full moon. And notice where it rises now. Now it's up and it's up in the constellations. It gets into Taurus and Gemini. Um, those constellations are plus 30 degrees. They're 30 degrees above the equator. So you have a 60 degree shift from north to south. It's nothing unusual. The moon does this all the time. But yet some people just seem to really get thrown by that and, and they don't understand. Um, and all I'm trying to say is it, it's natural. It, uh, it, 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 you know, it's something the moon does every month. Um, and, but if you're not a student of the sky and follow it constantly, it, it can be a bit confusing. But the ones that really get me are the ones that say that the, the moon is, is just um, um, acting really strange. I mean, it's, uh, its orbit has changed. It's not in the right place in the sky. Well, um, I can prove to you that it is. The mount that I'm not using tonight, my Atlas, uh, let's see, that, that wave reader, that could be some exhaust from the car. It's kind of warm in here. Let me shut it back down because I don't want that wave ring in there to accept that nice view. Um, the, the Atlas mount that I have is is a um, it's a computer controlled mount. Um, it was built uh, I want to say in 2003, 2004. Let's go with 2003 to round it off to make it 10 years old right now. When that mount was built. The computer data that was put in it. Um, I've got to hit this and keep that. Uh, hold on, we got it back here. Um, they load the data in it for the location um, of the stars, the planets, the moon, and everything for I don't know how many years out into the future. Um, that blue is interesting, but I believe that's only because um, uh, we are, yeah, it's the. Just the angle that the uh, it's catching the edge of the field here, um, but I say the, that computer's loaded with the data well in advance. So what I'm saying is that in 2003 those positions were loaded in the computer. Now, when I go out at night and I do my calibration, uh, do a lineup, I line up the uh, polar axis uh, and, and and calibrate it. I have it go to a couple stars and and say okay. Uh, this star is Arcturus, this star is Capellus, or whatever it is, um, in the mount, and hit OK in the mount. And what you're doing is you're, you're telling the mount what time it is, where it is on the Earth, and what stars it's pointing at. And, and it's all set. Now, if I tell it to go to Jupiter, it'll go to Jupiter because uh, it knows what date it is, it knows what time it is, so it knows where Jupiter's going to be. Now, if the moon had really gone wacky, and left its orbit, and it was in all these different places that I've seen some of these uh, sites say it, it's done. Um, and I hit the moon uh, on my computer, and my scope goes into action here in 2013. Um, if it were true, the telescope would go to a blank spot in the sky where the moon should be, but isn't because something happened to its orbit. Well, guess what? That's not what happens. 
the moon, the telescope swings right over and points right at the moon. So all I'm trying to say is nothing strange has happened with the orbit of the moon. It's right where it's supposed to be. The telescope swings to the spot where it was calculated it should be 10 years ago, and sure enough, there it is. Um, I just find that interesting, um, throw that out there. I mean, there may be people out there that totally disagree with me, and as I say, um, I hate confrontation, so don't get mad at me. I'm, I'm just giving you the information as I know it. Um, uh, you uh, may disagree. You may have uh, other sources and information that would you know dispute that, but uh, I just find it interesting. Um, uh, have some fun with that, but um, I find it uh, strange and interesting. That crater up there right near the Terminator is Cape um, uh, Kepler. Uh, that has a gorgeous ray pattern of its own. It's not going to be as visible tonight. Um, it's too close to the Terminator. You can see uh, the uh, part leading into the center of the disk. You can see uh, some of that uh, ray structure show, starting to show up. But when that gets fully out in the sun, it really, really shows up nice. Um, I don't think... Uh, uh, looking at... Uh, doing some still images after I go off the air here. Um, unfortunately, the uh, conditions are really pretty ratty. I don't think I'm going to have much success. Uh, I could try a couple of them. This this area here always intrigues me, uh, Copernicus. That's, that's really nice. Um, but down, down in the northern part, that Sinus Iridium area, Let's see, let's see if we can get down to there. I notice I'm already 31 minutes in. As uh, usual, I just blabble on about some things. and I had nothing particular in plan uh, to do tonight other than to look around. <clears throat> um, I'm, uh, th this, is, this is the color I like right here. Now, again, that, that's that color of Mary Imbrium floor. Look at it. Look at that blues in there. Um, and uh, it's pretty uniform. You got the blues and the browns mixed. Uh, th that, I believe, is, is, is a real coloration in the floor that this camera is doing a nice job of picking up. Uh, I'm trying to see what kind of detail we've got behind Sinus Iridium. Um, it's awful close to the Terminator. Uh, let's, I'm zoomed in pretty far. Let's back out a little bit. Uh, okay. Let's go about here and zoom along this back edge. And see, there, there's Plato, and there's that large crater, fairly large crater. I've got a, a map here, but it's not gonna it's not gonna do justice to that area. Um, let's see. I'm showing now this this, this paper map I'm using is in the polar regions, it's really, really bad. Uh, it could be Birmingham. Um, there's a crater marked number 36 right in that area. Uh, I just don't like the way it's displayed. I, I can't say with certain, so I'm not going to you know, try to give you a name of that crater. Um, I, don't, I don't trust that. Um, but I, I've always in, uh, found this area behind Sinus Iridium and below Plato in the polar region, uh, a very fascinating area. There's some nice, nice structure down in here. Um, uh, come on, uh, yeah, that's about as far as it's going to go. Then it's going to get over into the, the sunlit side, uh, where it'll just be uh, too bright to look at. I'm 33 minutes in here, guys. I'm going to have to think about ending this in a second. Let's just swing up along the term area quick, Terminator quick here, and I'll end it for the night. Um, Kind of review, um, I'm just talking about uh, the upcoming winter. Uh, there may be some months when it's going to be really tough for me to get out here. Um, I, I, I just may not be able to do it if the weather is just too cold and brutal. And we may have to do some other things. Uh, if I can, I, I definitely will. Um, and uh, who knows, maybe we'll uh, try to do a Jupiter some night. Uh, the only trouble is I think that's going to be up and observable real nice uh, uh, right in the dead of winter. And uh, it's uh, not fun. I don't, uh, I don't enjoy the cold like I used to. Uh, let's try to stop this right here.
This is again Mayor Humorum, um, <clears throat> the crater Cassendi, and Doplamar is the uh, buried crater over on the left hand side. Let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit as we finish up. Um, yeah, there we go. Look at that ridging. Look at those ridge lines between um, that go from uh, um, Cassendi on the right side across Mare Humorum and over to the other side. And Doplamar is that uh, partially buried crater with a central peak. And there's, look at that nice ridge lines there in the front there. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, this color is weird. It's awful intense right here, but I think that's just because uh, where it's located. I'm going to turn the intensity down a little bit. But um, uh, let's see. Let's let's what happens if we touch up the gain? And uh, I got to think about cutting. Uh, yeah, we got a little better view of it that way here. We can cut the exposure down. Yeah, there's there's some nice view. There you got nice nice view of. Uh, Merhumorum, um, some of the crater pitting in its floor. Um, those ridges there are really nice. And the reason they stand out so nice tonight because the sun angle is, is quite low there. Uh, we've just gone past sunrise. Um, okay, so, so with that, guys, uh, I'll end it here. Um, good to be back with you again. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get you know another session or two in before the weather really goes really bad for us in the winter months. Um, uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get something done. We'll have some fun with it. So until the next time, guys, uh, uh, good health, uh, clear skies, and uh, we'll see you pretty soon, guys. Take care.